गोरा पहुनी ना फज जाए मैं ओ अंधेरी I'm significant. Huh? I gave up chanting of Prabhu's name, Radha Krishna. I was I always engaged myself in worldly intoxication. I'm very wretched, sir. How I can be happy? Never and never. Oh, Bhok Chandra, you should be merciful. I'm praying in your lotus feet that be merciful. And I can do bhajan. Oh, Bhok, Gura Bhong, your best. वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमो महाबदनाय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायते कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नाम्ने गौरतिशे गुरवे गौरचंद्राय राधिकाय तदाले कृष्णाय कृष्ण भक्ताय तदभक्ताय नमो We are discussing so high classes of or important <coughs> important siddhant. Very carefully you should give attention. Then even a nectar of even one word you should not miss. It will help you so much, so much. So, we discussed about Sadha, Sadhu Sangha, Sadha again, uh, and then taking shelter in the lotus feet of Gurudev, taking Diksha, Siksha, serving Gurudev, what, how? Vishrambhaina Guru Shiva. Oh, oh, he is my best bosom friend and protector and seda, like this. And then, oh, give up all the nonsense things. And then, oh, Nishtha may come. After Nishtha, Ruchi, Ashrakti, and then Arati. But, there are all the explanation of anya vilarsita sunyam jnan karma dhana vritam ankullena krishna nushilana bhakti ruttama Barometer is anya vilarsita To please Krishna, to serve Krishna, to chant and do everything by your all senses continuously in the guidance of Guru Vaishnava. Hmm? Always like a honey uh, on broken stream of honey like that. Hmm? This is Bhakti. But it is not highest bhakti. If it will be done, giving up all kinds of worldly desires, anya vilasita. 
and gyan karma anapritam. Not covered with gyan and then it will be the highest. Up to madanakkabha. It is not far only sadhana. It is siddha too. So Radhika's this uttama bhakti is in purest and in fullest form. We are doing sadhana. And due to uh, by the stage of our what we are doing with Annapilas or Bhakti with covered of Gyan and this. What we are doing? So Bhakti has been told of various kind. Hmm? And that I just told yesterday. Hmm? Through Bhakti is not, it has been cancelled. It is no Bhakti. It not comes in the category of pure bhakti. So it has been rejected. Understand why? Why it has been rejected? <laughs> Always take the barometer of Annapila Sitasana and then judge. To any devotees too, you should take this as look and see whether he is following this or not. Then proper, you should give respect. Srila Gurudev has ordered me to explain why the uh, activities of Dhruva Maharaj are not pure bhakti, why it has been cancelled and rejected. In brief, not. Dhruva Maharaj is called a Sakam Bhakta. That means that his bhakti was mixed with karma the desire to enjoy the fruits of his activities. He desired a kingdom greater than the kingdom of his father, who was the ruler of the whole earth, even greater than the kingdom of Brahma, who was the ruler of the whole universe. His brother was favored by his mother, and he wasn't. So he became upset, and he wanted to get this kingdom. So. His mother advised him to go to the forest, that the best of all mothers and all fathers multiplied millions of times over is Lord Narayan. So Dhruva Maharaj went to the forest and there Krishna or Bhagavan seeing him with a strong desire to get his darshan, to get his material fruit, sent Narada as his spiritual master. And under the guidance of Narada Muni, he engaged in great austerities. First, he was only eating the roots of the tree, roots and leaves of plants. And then every few days, he was just taking some water. And gradually, his austerities became so great that he was only taking air every 12 days. After six months, he being car carrying the Lord within his heart, he also became heavy like the Lord. Because the Lord was in his heart and the Lord is heavy, Juva Maharaj became so heavy, standing on one foot, that he compressed the earth, the whole earth sunk in. And because he wasn't breathing but every 12 days taking a breath, the whole universe became suffocated. So the demigods went to Lord Narayan and said, please do something before the whole universe suffocates. So he was thinking of Lord Narayan within his heart, and then Lord Narayan came out of his heart, his meditation broke, and he saw the Lord face to face. Knowing that his desire was to have a great kingdom to rule, Lord Narayan didn't even waste time hearing from him what he wanted. He just told him, I am going to grant you first the kingdom of this earth, which you'll be able to rule for 36,000 years. And after that, you'll be given a planet, which is the neighboring planet to the Ramapriya Vaikuntha planet, the Vaikuntha planet within this material world. 
and you'll be able to rule there on the planet called the Pole Star. Then the Lord disappeared, and Dhruva Maharaj lamented and wept that I was looking for some broken pieces of glass, some material facility, even wanting a kingdom of the universe he now considered as broken pieces of glass. But I found a great jewel, but I neglected that jewel and I accepted this benediction, material benediction from him. So we want to follow Dhruva in the sense of minimizing our material necessities, doing austerities for the sake of reaching the Supreme, but we don't want to follow him in the sense that he had material desires, which was his motivation for serving. So in the barometer verse, Anyavilasita Sunyam, Jnana Karmadi Anavratam, his bhakti was covered. It was avratam, not anavratam. It was covered by karma, the desire to enjoy the fruits of his so-called bhakti. And therefore his bhakti is not pure and he doesn't fit within the category of Anyavilasita Sunyam. After that, Gyan Bhakti comes. Canon, can, oh, Sriman Shemananda, to explain this, what is oh, Gyan Bhakti? Can you? Why? Why you are disturbing him? Oh, uh, Bhakti Sar Maharaj. What do you mean by Gyan Bhakta? Gyani Bhakta. So we saw the play of uh, Sri Palad Maharaj and his father Rani Kashipu in the appearance of Lord Nishringadev. So. I won't deal, uh, dwell on the details since we all saw the play. However, we can understand in that play, uh, again, uh, to make brief, there were two important things. One is we can learn from Prahlad, just as we learn from Dhruva to have determination to achieve our goal. Uh, from Prahlad, we learn to ha completely accept the Lord as our protector and our maintainer. And this is uh, considered uh, the most important or sort of lakshana of Sharanagati, Gopatritvatve, to accept the Lord as one's uh, maintainer. And the other uh, symptoms of Sharanagati are considered the tatashta lakshan or subsidiary to that, secondary characteristics. So Prahlad Maharaj demonstrated this very important primary characteristics of Sharanagati to accept the Lord as his maintainer. He never uh, worried for himself in any dangerous situation created by his father, death-threatening uh, situation, he was only remembering the Lord and chanting the Lord's holy names. At the same time, when uh, he had, he's called Ganabhakta because he had knowledge of the Lord's uh, omnipresence. He saw the Lord everywhere. He felt his presence at all times. He saw him in all things. He had. He had awareness and knowledge of the Lord's omnipresence. He had the knowledge of the Lord's omnipotence. And, uh, and he had the knowledge of the Lord's omniscience, that the Lord knows all things. He uh, knows everything through all time and all space. He's everywhere and he's all powerful. So he never felt any concern or need for himself to worry about anything. But because his uh, worship of the Lord is somewhat covered by this knowledge of the Lord's opulence. When the Lord appeared and fought with Rani Kashipu and all his demonic armies and destroyed them all, and then he was sitting there still angry. He was sitting roaring still and everyone was afraid. The demigods were afraid to approach him and they kind of pushed Prahlad forward. You, you handle this because we're too afraid to approach the Lord. And Prahlad came up and sat on the Lord's lap and the Lord was pacified. But uh, even though the Lord was covered with blood and had just exerted himself in a, a great heroic battle uh, for his pleasure ultimately, as we know behind the Leela, this was all for his pleasure that he could manifest his heroic 
mood, an, an angry mood. Still, Prahlad didn't say, oh my dear Lord, would you like some water? You see, his, his knowledge of the Lord's greatness covered his devotion in a way that made it not so spontaneous. Not like Mother Jasoda, who thinks, oh, if I don't feed Krishna, he will die. It, her knowledge of the Lord's opulence, omniscience, omnipresence, and omnipotence is completely covered and, and uh, lost in her mat maternal mood of love and affection for the Lord. So she thinks, without my protection, she's not thinking Krishna is my protector, she's thinking I'm Krishna's protector and I'm his maintainer. So we see there's a difference, a, a distinction between the bhakti of Prahlad and the bhakti of um, Mother Jasoda. And this example is that because his bhakti is uh, conditioned by Gyan and knowledge of the Lord's Aishvarya or opulence, uh, it is that when we measure it by the barometer of Anyabhilasita Sunyam, we see that his bhakti is somewhat covered by Gyan and therefore doesn't quite meet the standard of pure bhakti. But I want to ask you, his activities and meditation was pure or not. Understand? Yes. Was it pure bhakti or not? Y yes, it was pure bhakti, but not but, of the but highest what category. Loopholes? <laughs> what, what, where is the defect that you tell him again bhakti? Oh, what you are giving? <laughs> she is gone. <laughs> you, Madhav Maharaj, what I asked, is Bhakti was pure or no? If not, then why? Or if it is pure Bhakti, then what is some defect, low false? Do we want to follow his bhakti or not? This is so, we have heard from Sri Bhakti Bhakti Sar Maharaj about Prahlad Maharaj. So, Gurudev asked, what is defect in his sadhan? Not sadhan, in his bhakti. He was not sadhak at all. What is defect in his bhakti? And why you address him as a Gani Bhakta? And after that next moment, Gurudev asks you, address you all, do you like to follow Prahlad Maharaj or not? Then everyone will answer, no, no, why not? Something must be there. So Prahlad Maharaj, he has opulent mood. He is seeing his God everywhere that is omnipotent, omniscient, everything. He never thinks that my God is sometimes my God is hungry, thirsty, he never thought this. Thought this is beyond of his expectation. But according to this parameter of Rubuga Sripad, Anna Bhila Sita Sunnam Gana Karma Danavritam. Anukullena Krishna no Silanam Bhakti Ruttama. Here, Prahlad Maharaj, the activity of body, mind, sense, and emotion is not for completely to satisfy Krishna or to welfare of Krishna, not to please in Krishna. So, because he always opulent mood, he is seeing my God is everywhere present, and in God, everyone is present there. So he is always in the mood of opulence of mood. Yes, he always is opulence mood. So his bhakti is not pure bhakti according to Sadhguru Goswami Pad's definition. Pure bhakti, no, but something. I am going to according to Sadhguru Goswami Pad's definition. No, don't you can tell that defect? No, I am not not tell defect. I told according to Sadhguru Goswami Pad, it is not pure as Sadhguru Goswami Pad want to say. Follow me. <laughs> now you understood hmm. what Brajnath he told? Again you should. 
here and try to understand Prahlad is Mahabhagavat, not like Mahabhagavat. But we don't follow. We follow anyone who has the mood of Prajavasi Mandi. This is the main thing. Oh, Krishna is Jasoda Nanda. Krishna is a friend of covered boys. He is Gopi Ballab or Gopi Nath, Radhana. He is not God at all. He has no opulence. He cannot take his own meal. I will have to be, I will have to get my breast milk. Hmm? So, he is always playing. I should take him from forest and forcibly I should feed him. Feed him. Oh, what Prahlad Maharaj did? He thinks that he is not, he has no appetite, nothing to do, he never tires, he is lords of lords, so he is praying and he is pure saranagati in saranagati too, and he is Mahabhagavata. But we want that this bhakti will not direct us to Guru Vrindavan. It may take to some part to Baikunti Bhakti. Nishinga they were always in Baikunti. So this is something that we should think about this. Now Suddha Bhakti. Um, we we understand this very beautiful ideal that we want Braja Bhakti. But our Acharyas, they have so much emphasized the teachings of Prahlad Maharaj yes. that we should very clearly understand. And if we say we don't want to follow, it may, devotees may think we should not care for Prahlad Maharaj. Right, right, all right. But still we are uh, cautioned by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasari Prabhupada, Srila Bhakti Vinanta Swami Prabhupada also how we should understand these teachings? Oh, you should understand that in the beginning, as he followed Saranagati, you should follow. As his bhakti was to <coughs> selfless, even Krishna came in the form of Nishimdha and he wanted to give something, but he denied. He never thought about his father mother, like Dhruva, that where is my mother? All these are things that first we should follow these, then Braj Bhakti. So we must follow these things in the beginning. And when you will know <coughs> that Krishna is Supreme Lord, we should try to be Sharanagat to Him. And then you can develop. Swamiji came, Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada came and told everywhere the first lesson that Krishna is Supreme, Lords of Lords. Very happy. He can do anything. But he sent me to tell that my task is completed. Now you should go and tell them, all the devotees, clearly, that you should try to forget that Krishna is Supreme Lord. So by the order I am coming and telling you hmm, that any good devotee, they should follow practically uh, Prahlad Maharaj in the beginning. <coughs> but idea <coughs> Go only with that. Oh, Prahlad Maharaj, you should be merciful to me that I can follow any Prajabhasi. Ultimate goal is that. We are in Bhadi Bhakti. Even not Rupa Nuga. Always this, consider this fact. And then go on to me. Now, <coughs> Suddha Bhakti. Who is 
you should explain. Shuddha Bhakta. Yeah. In very big. Mm-hmm. Why? But where is the defect? Where is his glory? Oh. Try to uh, share very patiently. Then you will, can judge who is in what stage of life. Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Shalakaya Chakshura Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha So in the progression of the advancement in pure bhakti uh, now we come to the level of Shuddha Bhakta someone who is actually considered pure bhakta up to this point their bhakti has not been considered completely in that category, because there is something still covering. In the case of Prahlad Maharaj, Gyan, still covering there. In the case of Juru Maharaj, he had some tendency toward karma. He wanted to enjoy some opulence of this world. So, the Srimad Bhagavatam narrates the story of Maharaj Ambarish. And Ambarish Maharaj, uh, he was completely, fully devoted to Krishna. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is described that Ambarish Maharaj was fully serving with all of his bodily senses and his mind. Savai mana krishna padaravindayor vachamsi vaikunta gunana varanane. He was serving with his mind always fixed in Krishna. His words were always glorifying Krishna. His hands and his uh, different organs of his body, his legs, they were always engaged in cleaning the temple, going on pilgrimage to holy places. And constantly his ears were absorbed in hearing Satkatodaye, constant recitations of Krishna's glories. His nostrils, his sense of smell, were engaged in, in smelling the very beautiful flowers and tulsi offered to the lotus feet of the Lord. His eyes were engaged in seeing the very beautiful deity forms of the Lord. So like this, all of his senses, his mind, and his bhavs of his heart, they were fully absorbed. So according to the definition of pure bhakti, anyavilashita shunyam jnana karamadi anavritam anukul yena krishnanushilanam. He was constantly doing anukul krishnanushilanam, fully absorbed even with his very bhavs of his heart. So Maharaj Ambarish also uh, had the very outstanding quality, Gurudev told the other day, that he had very deep, full faith in the statements of the Shastras. And the Shastras are telling the benefits which are derived in terms of acquiring the blessings of Bhakti Devi if one follows Ekadasi Vrat. So we, know, we have heard the story how uh, Ambarish Maharaj, along with his uh, queen and along with so many associates was going to the Madhuvan forest on the Jamuna river and there he was performing so many austerities every single Ekadasi and Dvadashi day for one whole entire year performing Nirjal Ekadasi and he was constantly uh, hearing the glories of Krishna when he would go on these days and then uh, at one point when it was time at the end of one year for him to break his Ekadasi fast, if he would not break it at the very exact param time, and, and if he would go over that param time by even one or two seconds, then all the benefits of his entire fast would be lost. So at this time, uh, we, we know that Durvasa Rishi came there. Uh, Durvasa Rishi is a very, very powerful Brahma uh, realized Rishi. He can travel anywhere in the whole universe in a single moment. If he looks upon anyone and he says, Oh, you should die. Immediately that person will die. So he had very great power and mystic potencies. And he came there. Uh, And at that time, uh, Maharaj Ambarish was just at that moment preparing to break his Ekadasi fast. And all of his Brahmins and advisors were there and they were telling him, Yes, yes, this is the time coming, approaching right now. And suddenly Durvasa Rishi came. Oh, so Maharaj Ambarish, very, uh, uh, with great respect, he offered his Dandavat Pranams to uh, Durvasa. 
And then he greeted him and asked him to please come. I am just about to break my Akadasi fast and it would be my great honor if you would also come and you would uh, observe this great feast. Huh? And it is so auspicious that you have come at this moment. So please come now and I am just about to break my fast. But Durvasa Rishi told, oh, first I must go and I will bathe in the Jumuna River and then I will return. So Maharaj Ambarish uh, told him, we will wait here for you. So as the final minutes were approaching, Maharaj Ambarish was becoming concerned. Durvasa had not come back. And he was asking his advisors what to do, what to do. So uh, just at that very final time, Durvasa had not returned, then his advisors instructed that you should take simply a palmful, just one drop of Sharanamrita. Because this can be considered both breaking and also not breaking the Akadasi fast. So in this way you will not offend your guest because uh, to take, if one invites a guest to come to Prashad, to observe a Prashadam feast, and he does, does not uh, uh, wait for that guest to come and he himself takes before that, it is considered a very a great transgression of etiquette and like an insult. So Durvasa Rishi, at the moment when Ambarish Maharaj took this drops of Sharanamritam, he, by his mystic power, immediately he knew, he understood, oh, this king, this puffed up king, he has thought that he is so great that I have come here, great Brahma Rishi, and he will take this feast before me. So he became extremely angry. Hmm? And he pulled some hairs from his head and he threw it on the ground and immediately a very powerful fiery demon was created. Hmm? And then he sent that this demon should go and should immediately destroy and kill Ambarish Maharaj. So the demon was coming toward Maharaj Ambarish and Maharaj Ambarish was standing there with folded palms and Durvasa Rishi was cursing Ambarish Maharaj, how foolish and puffed up he is, but very humble, without, without budging, without being nervous or anything. Maharaj Ambarish was simply standing there. And as this demon approached, immediately from Lord Narayan himself, Sudarshan Chakra came and came flying in the sky and completely destroyed this demon. Hmm? So, Maharaj Ambarish was standing there and Durvasa Rishi saw the Sudarshan Chakra and now the Sudarshan Chakra began to come towards him. So Durvasa Rishi became extremely frightened because this Sudarshan Chakra is so all-powerful. It is the most powerful weapon in the whole creation. The whole creation can be destroyed by this weapon. So, uh, at that moment, immediately, uh, Durvasa Rishi began to run at top speed and he flew off into the air, into the far corners of the universe. And as he was flying along, oh, the Sudarshan Chakra was simply pursuing him, right behind him. And he was feeling the burning heat of Sudarshan Chakra coming. So as he went, first of all, he went to the abode of Lord Brahma. And in the abode of Lord Brahma, he fell at the feet of Brahmaji. And he told, please, please protect me, please protect me, Sudarshan Chakra is coming to burn me. And Brahmaji told, Oh, I'm very sorry, Durvasa Rishi, but I do not have the power. This is coming from Vishnu himself. Uh, the only person that can stop this is Vishnu, but you can go to Lord Shiva uh, because he is very dear to Lord Vishnu. Perhaps he can also stop this chakra. So then immediately he flew to the abode of Lord Shiva. Uh, and in the abode of Lord Shiva, he fell at his lotus feet and he begged, please, please save me. And Lord Shiva told him, oh, I'm sorry. It is not possible. This is the most powerful weapon of my Lord, Lord Vishnu. So you must go immediately to Lord Vishnu. He's the only one that can save you. And now he flew and flew through the air. And actually he went to the abode of Vishnu within the material world. And that, in that abode he fell at the lotus feet of Vishnu. And there he was shaking and the Sudarshan Chakra was standing, was coming closer and closer. And he begged Lord Vishnu, please, please save me. And Lord Vishnu told him, no, it is, it is not possible, I'm sorry, my dear Rishi. Aham bhakta paradhino hyasvatantra iva dvija. Sadhubir 
ग्रस्त हृदय भक्त भक्त जना प्रिय अहम भक्त पराधीन आई एम नॉट एक्चुअली इंडिपेंडेंट आई एम कंप्लीटली डिपेंडेंट अपॉन माय भक्त आई एम नॉट स्वतंत्र ही इज ही इज कंप्लीटली कंट्रोलिंग मी बाय हिज लव एंड माय भक्त इज आई एम विद इन द हार्ट ऑफ माय भक्त एंड द भक्त इज विद इन माय हार्ट एंड इवन दोस हु आर द भक्त ऑफ माय भक्त 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 और भक्त जना प्रिय है those who are priya to my bhakta oh they are also very dear to me so it is not possible for me to save you in this situation because you have offended my pure bhakta so the only way that you can get release from this you must immediately go and you must fall at his lotus feet in great repentance with tears in your eyes and beg him to forgive you and then and then only will you be protected from the power of my sudarshan chakra otherwise it will destroy you so immediately durvasa rishi went flying again through the universe and he came back to the very lotus feet of maharaj ambarish and during this time one entire year had passed and maharaj ambarish had stood there waiting for the durvasa rishi and he was praying and praying to sudarshan chakra and actually this is the only reason why sudarshan chakra did not completely burn him because the pure devotee was praying for his protection so then at that moment durvasa rishi he he fell at the lotus feet of maharaj ambarish maharaj ambarish immediately prayed to sudarshan chakra oh please he glorified sudarshan chakra and he begged him that he would release this durvasa rishi and now sudarshan chakra hovered in the sky and then disappeared now durvasa rishi was so much humbled and he was crying at the lotus feet of maharaj ambarish and maharaj ambarish was feeling very embarrassed that such a great brahma rishi was at his feet and immediately he bowed down and he picked him up please please don't pay obeisances to me please now i want that you will honor this feast with me and at that moment oh Durvasa Rishi began to praise Maharaj Ambarish. Uh, what is that verse? Aho, aho, aho Ananta Dasa Nam. Mahima Adhishtame. Huh? Mahima Adhishtame. Today I have seen the Mahima, the glories of the Dasas, those who are the servants of Ananta Vishnu. I have seen their glories because even though. I just tried to destroy them. Oh, they are so merciful, so kind, so non-envious that they prayed for me for my benefit. So in this way he glorified Maharaj Ambarish and Maharaj Ambarish begged him please now you stay here and you observe a great feast with me and then uh, Durvasa Rishi accepted he observed this great feast and then after that he begged to take leave of Maharaj Ambarish and he left to go to his abode so in this way the glories of the pure shuddha bhakta who is completely surrendered to the lotus feet of krishna completely thinking about him and absorbed in him and has prem in his heart for krishna he is so dear to krishna that if anyone even slightly offends him krishna will never forgive that person it is impossible that that person can be forgiven until and unless he goes to the very pure devotee that he has offended so this is the lesson of shastra and we see that uh, maharaj ambarish he is considered although he is actually uh, in the stage of sadaka he is not in the stage of siddha like actually prahlad maharaj he is siddha like gurudev told no longer simply sadaka but maharaj ambarish although he sadaka he is considered superior because he is a shuddha bhakta and his bhakti is in a higher stage it it is considered higher because he has engaged all of his senses according to this verse of anyavilashi to shunyam he is engaged all of his senses and his mind and his bhavs of his heart completely in serving krishna favorably so in this way this shuddha bhakta in this world the prime example is maharaj ambarish and once you talk to the rest of the really he engaged in everything 
the service of Krishna. His tongue, mind, hands, feet, heart, head, everything. It is true. But he was sadhan. He was not able to serve <coughs> oh, face to face. But Premi Bhakta, like Hanuman, face to face to Ramchandra, more superior to Nishingade, he served Ram in so many ways. So many ways. And he said the very powerful. But he used to feed Ramchandra. He used to think that Ram will be tired. So he used to take him on his shoulder, soldiers. Always protecting him with his tail like a castle. He went to Lanka and he burnt all Lanka, which was made of only gold and, gold. Gold and jewels. diamonds and jewels. Only oh, for that he was, he has stolen away Sita. He requested Sita to, to come on his back and he will at once take you to Ram. She denied, oh Ram should come here. <laughs> you cannot touch me. <laughs> And then he came and took Ram, Lakshman and all. And they went to Lanka and they finished everything. And gate came on to Vibhishan. And after then, then, oh, 11,000 years he served Ram in various ways. I have no time to explain. So he is serving. Hmm? In very good way. This Anna Vilas slow oh, covers all. But there is something. And what is that? He cannot embrace Krishna around. Never. If Ram is sitting with Sita in night, he cannot go there. He cannot feed Ram with his remnants, which is very sweet and okay. He cannot. He cannot fight with Ram and defeat. So, not like Laukika Bandhuvat. He cannot serve Ram as a Laukik Bandhuvat, means friendship. But it was in Pandavas, especially in Arjuna. Arjuna. Krishna married his sister to <coughs> Arjuna. And for Arjuna, <coughs> in Mahabharata battle, he took the reins of the, his chariot and he served Arjuna. Even he served his horses. He did so many menial service for Arjuna. Many of them? Very slowly, humble. So many things. Arjun and Krishna can sleep on the same bed. And Krishna can give his feet on the breast of Arjun. And Arjun too. He can give his faith only. Krishna engaged Hanuman, that Hanuman. Hmm? Oh, in the service of Arjuna, you should always protect and be on the top of the, top of the chariot in Dvaja. And you should have to serve him. I am serving your master. I am Ram serving, so you should serve him. So Arjuna, very good. I think that Draupadi is more superior than Arjuna too. Krishna always followed the order of Draupadi. And he used to tell her, Sakhi, like Bridge Sakhi. 
but something, something, something. What? It is not pleased by them, but not controlled by them. He cannot send Arjuna to no. Braja. No. He cannot. If he will see the universal form of oh, Krishna, he will beg. Oh, my dear Supreme Lord, excuse me. excuse me, I have made you like a servant in my chariot. I have told you friend, friend. Oh, now you should excuse my these things. But any Prajabasi? Oh, they cannot be. Krishna may show, show him millions of his universal face, universal form to them, and they will simply laugh and joke. <laughs> <laughs> Any ghost has come. <laughs> not more than that. <laughs> Krishna showed his universal robe to Mother Yasoda two times. And then he showing this he feared. And at once called the Brahmins. Oh, what is this? Any ghost in the mouth of Krishna? Or on me? The told days, oh, anyhow, we will save Krishna and you. <coughs> Bring a black cow. Some cow dung and cow urine. Mix it. And with the tail of cows, oh, we will do. Self Krishna mantra, O Lalate Ki Shavam Dhyay, like this. And they do, and where our Dakshina? And Jasoda Miya gave so many donations. So, even by saying universal, oh, they don't care for that. But for Pandavas, they can. Sometimes they are polite, sometimes when they forget this, then like friend. But not Bhujam friend as Brajavasi, cowherd boy. They can defeat Krishna. Arjun can't give, cannot give any sweet thing from his mouth to Krishna. He has no dare. But Brajavasi, what can they? If they are taking anything very sweet, then they will take from their mouths and give it. Oh, Krishna, how? And Krishna will happily take it. Oh, very, 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 very sweet, very sweet. So, Arjuna and Pandavas cannot. They have sometimes Aishwarya Mai Bhakti. The appellants, they can see the appellants of Krishna. So, he could not send him. But why he was. Uh, he was under the control of Arjun, you know. Only there was a Sakha in Braja. His name was Arjun. And he was Priya Narma Sakha. Hmm? So by the, this reference, similarity by the name, he used to love Arjun. Hmm? Wasn't, wasn't the Arjuna Dwarka an expansion of the Arjun in Braj? Yes. He, the expansion of Braja Arjun. And Dwarka Krishna is Arjun really. So, no, no, no. Arjun in Braja, Dham, Sridham, Sudham, Basudham, Lavanga, Ujjwal, Arjun, Kokil, Bhringa, Basanta, Subal Sakha and then Madhu Mangal. They are very high class of Bhujam friend. They can go up to Mahabhav also. Subal and So Arjun cannot be like this. But more than that, oh, Uddhav is Prem Parvak. Prematu. Pandavas are Prem Par. And Uddhav is? Why Pramathu? More superior than Arjun. He was so, so much qualified that, oh, 
Buddha, my father and mother, especially my beloved gopis are dying in separation. I am also dying in their separation of one, but there are some certain things that I cannot go. I cannot satisfy go, satisfy gopis. When I will go, they will burn into more separation. That is why for them I am not going. Please go and satisfy my father, mother, Brajavasi, even cow, cow, cows, and especially my gopis and especially Lalta Vishaka in a special oh, Radhika. Very soon I am coming. Other, you should not tell by your own word. words. Only what I am giving, so many Shamba, so many messages. Message. So one after, after, after you should give them. So he went there. He wanted to send Buddha in the school where Krishna has learned of praying. Nishwat, Nirmal praying. Selfless view of praying. Because Krishna had learned all this from the school of uh, love and affection in Braja, principally Srimati Radhika, the Lalita Vashakha are head of the departments and, and others. And Krishna learned praying. What is praying? Radhaya Pranayam. This is look applied to there. And then <coughs> he said that he should be admitted in the school of gopis. But when he get, went there, Gopis took his uh, what uh, examine whether he should be admitted in our school or not, and Buddha felt <laughs> he was not admitted in this school. But he realized oh, how glorious this school is, and then he began to pray. Bande Nanda Prajeshtri Nam Padarinum Jasang Hari Kothod Gita Punat Trayam. I am going down. Even one dust of any gopi of pressure. But it would be better that I should pray one dust of Sirmati Radhika lotus feet. And then <coughs> to serve Radhika. She would have prayed like this. And he thought that I am not qualified to be in this school. So he knew the glory from far away and he returned back to Krishna. Oh Krishna, you should come to Vrindavan yourself. I cannot do anything. I went there but I increased their separation. I made them more suffering. So please you should come. Otherwise they will die. All cows will die. Father, mother, die. Hmm? So if you want to save Praja, then you must come. Hmm? Krishna began to weep and weep. Uddha could not understand that Krishna heart. How soft is the heart of Krishna? He was telling more separation that Gopi felt separation for Krishna. But none needs to help, to share. So he told Buddha, you have gone there and have touched some glory of Gopis. Now I can tell something about my heart, how I am feeling. I send you only for this sense. So Uddha is Prema Atu. Atu means, you know, very much as excited or what? Excited by Overwhelmed. No? Overwhelmed with the love and affection. He saw in gopis. He could not imagine 
that why Krishna came from Braja. All of him most in Dwarka and Mathura not so much. And why he married with six in thousand of wives here? Why he married? And so many children? Why he did? Oh, he could not calculate with his mind. So Krishna was repenting and repenting for movies. He could not tell all this, his heart, he opened his heart to Uddha too. He wanted to come, but there was some restriction that he could not. So they are, Uddha is Prematu, and he is glorified and want to serve, but he cannot be a grass of Vrindavan to serve gopis. He wanted, but he could So gopis are not merely any bhakta. They are the expansions of Krishna. Only is No difference. Kala bhi. What? Ananda Chinna Rasapati Kala bhi. Kala bhi means all the manifestors of Krishna. Kaya buhulai. Or sometimes so much gopi, especially Radha, is superior to Krishna in this respect about loving each other. <coughs> Simati Radhika, love is of Madanakya Bhav, Krishna cannot touch. So to enjoy this Madanakya Bhav, he came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sachinandan Gaur. Gaur Hari Ki Gaur. All the devotees should be ready for drama play. And, and you. you. You gave the definition of frame ator. What is the definition of par? Frame par. Top superior? Frame par bhakta. Frame par bhakta. Par means more six. More six. <coughs> One question. How to reconcile that Ambaris Maras is Sudha Bhakta? He worshipped Radha Krishna in Vrindavan. And Hanuman, he is worshipping Ramachandra, serving Ramachandra. He is serving face to face. Ambarishi Sadha. He is doing Manshi Seva. Understand? Ashtakaliya Leela like. Ambarish was in Mathura in Madhuban. And also he is circumambulated in whole Braja. He went and he felt the glory of Krishna. So he is pure Bhakti. But Hanuman, oh, he is Siddha Bhakti. He was engaging his all senses directly to Ram. Very soon? This morning, quickly I will announce the name then. This is it. Very soon? This morning, the devotees who received initiation, we request you now to stand up. Sri Gurudev will announce your okay. spiritual new name. Bayatris Lee Kress. What is he? Or she? Okay. Where? Where? So this is to come here. Don't delay. I don't want delay. You should. Bajanti. Oh, Bajanti is good name. Peri Yo Bungers. Where? Oh, what now? 